am Meredith Morakovitz alongside Hal Steinbrenner. Hal, baseball is coming back. What was your initial reaction when you found out that the two sides had indeed agreed? Excitement and, and relief and, uh, you know, been a little bit impatient, quite frankly, the last last few weeks, but uh, we got it done. I'm actually up here at Yankee Stadium. The place looks great. and We're ready to roll. What type of vibe is there at Yankee Stadium right now? Because I imagine you don't have your full staff there because of everything and all the protocols with COVID-19. L- limited limited staff. But, you know, today, for instance, Garrett Cole scheduled to, uh, to pitch a sim game. And uh, I got very little sleep last night. I was so excited. Uh, it's going to be great just to see baseball after all these months. You mentioned Garrett Cole. That was a big off-season acquisition. And now it almost seems cruel that you had to wait this long to eventually see him in pinstripes. What is the anticipation like to finally see him in a regular season game when we get there? Uh, anticipation is high. We've, we've got a few weeks to go, unfortunately, before we see that. But uh, it's going to be great just to see this many players out on the field getting ready. And, you know, there was a lot of doubts that we would play or not play, um, not just because of negotiations, but because of the virus in general. And um, it's, it's going to be exciting. Everybody here is psyched. There is a very long book of protocols that every team must go through. Are you feeling confident that this is going to happen and you're going to be able to fit in 60 games? Yes, I am. I am. Uh, MLB did a great job with these health protocols and the union was great agreeing to them. And uh, it's going to keep everybody as safe as possible. I mean, Safety is first when it comes to the players and and all of the staff and eventually, hopefully, fans. Everybody's taking it, obviously, very seriously. And uh, I think uh, think the protocols are are very thorough uh, and very well thought out. Now, originally, the Yankees were going to have their what we're calling summer camp down in Tampa, Florida at the minor league facility. But because things have heated up with COVID, you decided to pivot. Was that at all a difficult decision to move the entire operation up north here? Well, it was difficult. We had spent weeks and weeks and weeks really perfecting, you know, sanitization techniques and products and got a lot of outside advice. And we had both facilities down there ready to go, uh, safe as any facilities in the country. But uh, as you said, things did heat up. So, you know, we made the decision. Things were calming down up here uh, to move back, even though the facilities were probably better for that amount of people uh, down in Tampa. With that being said, what is it going to look like? Because as we know, there's only one field at Yankee Stadium. Well, we're going to make sure everybody's, you know, safe distances and we're just going to have to get through these these three weeks and uh, then we'll be utilizing Scranton in all likelihood for the uh, for the for the other half of the team, so to speak. Um, but we'll we'll get through it. We'll make sure everybody is safe. Everybody's keeping their distances and following the protocols. Make it we'll make it happen. What are you most looking forward to over the next three weeks as the guys get ready to start the 2020 season? I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing the guys that were injured, um, you know, come back and and see them be able to play. Most of them have been been in Tampa, obviously. So I spent a lot of time with them and they've been progressing well. And uh, hopefully we get them all back for opening day. But it's it's going to be great to see to see 60 guys all in the same place, including, you know, our top prospects and and others. Um, It'll be good. You mentioned some of the top prospects. Esteban Florial is among the group. Davey Garcia, you have a guy like Clark Schmidt. Are you going to be watching those younger guys maybe even a little bit more closely because you haven't seen them as much as this three-week period progresses? Yes, I mean, obviously, you know, guys like Florial and and Schmidt have obviously been with the Tampa Tarpons, and, and, you know, I'm I'm able to keep a pretty close eye on them, you know, in that regard. But, yes, it's it's been a number of months, and – Everybody, I'm sure, is going to be a little bit rusty, even though some of these guys have been working out very informally in Tampa. But um, it's going to be it's going to be exciting to watch them. You know, they're our future. How can you just kind of take me through the process? Once you knew that a 60 game season was going to be implemented, what has your life been like? I imagine it has to be round the clock, busy, trying to just figure everything out logistically. Well, again, we, we've been busy. Oddly enough, I've been as busy as I've been in a while the last few months. I mean, just trying to figure out protocols, try to figure out when things started again, how to keep people safe, um, talking with outside consultants regarding sanitization and keeping places clean. Uh, we, we've learned a lot, as, as everybody has. Uh, but yes, once, once we knew it was game on, and particularly, as you alluded to, once we knew we had to go back to New York, which we weren't ready for at that point in time, uh, things have been pretty crazy here for the last few weeks, but Doug Bihar, our head of stadium operations, and everybody has, has done a great job. And we're now ready up here. 
everybody's going through the same thing. They were ramped up during the first spring training, obviously went home and now they're trying to ramp back up again. What concerns you the most about that aspect and potential injuries? Well, I think it's the same concern we have every off season, right? We're just rolling into another spring training the way we do every year. And we're hoping guys, you know, stayed safe and stayed in shape uh, when they were at their homes. And, you know, we had a group of eight to 10 guys that were at Steinbrenner field almost every day. Uh, Judge, Tyler Wade, and others. Um, I know they've stayed in shape. So it's it's really the same concern, Meredith, every year. Um, but this is certainly an altered reality, you know, doing this a second time in four months. Will there be any element of relief if you get to the 23rd and opening day is actually happening? Absolutely, there will be. And, you know, the playoffs are going to be very exciting. We just need to make sure we keep everybody safe, players, staff, and eventually fans. And I do expect to see fans in our stadium at some point to some degree. And uh, that's going to be a great day as well. How that's going to make a lot of Yankees fans very happy because I know they want to be there. How many conversations do you have with the league about potentially bringing fans back safely? When do those start taking place throughout this process? Well, the, those conversations have, have already happened. We've also had a lot of conversations with the governor's office and he's, he's been great. Uh, he's been a big advocate to get getting sports back on the field and then eventually when things are safe to get fans back in the stadium. So between the two of them, we, we've had multiple conversations over the course really of the last month. Do you have any idea what that would look like when fans are allowed in? I would imagine there'd be some type of limited capacity for them as well. Yeah, we've done a lot of work. Ticketmaster's been great helping us out, really, really putting a diagram together in, in which would keep everybody at least six feet apart. And, and it would be limited. I'm sure it'll be in the 20 to 30 percent range, hopefully, uh, at first. And that will it's definitely possible in this stadium to keep people at a safe distance wearing masks um, at those capacities. Because of all the different variables involved, what do you see as the biggest X factor this season? Well, I think keeping this virus at bay uh, for me in particular, and obviously New York City. Uh, and I did certainly, I think, just walking around yesterday, walking around the park, people are really behaving themselves here. Uh, it's impressive. I haven't been up here in a few months. Um, so that needs to continue. Everybody needs to be safe. And, and again, we need to be doing everything we need to do at this stadium to make it the safest stadium in the country and uh, ensure the safety of, of everyone. So we, we just need to get through these months and hopefully the virus... Uh, the virus stays down in our area. There's no question. Expectations were sky high for your team coming into this season. Has anything changed on your end because of the circumstances that we've gone through? No, but I think, uh, you know, it, this is going to be a sprint, right? Not a marathon. So we really need to come out of the gate. There, there, there can't be this two, two weeks of really not playing well to, uh, to begin with. And I think that puts added pressure on the team. It also creates a lot of excitement, I think. And um, so it's, it's going to be a difficult first month and we really need to perform well uh, to stay on top of the division and uh, as you know, be there at the end. Do you feel as though Aaron Boone is even more of an asset in a situation like this? Because it seems like nothing really phases him. He's very adaptive and he will improvise and he will adapt and he'll, he'll find a way to, to lead uh, even if it requires changes, you know, not, not getting as close to players, not patting them on the back, not doing all the things that he's great at as far as motivation. Well, this is an altered reality. We're all going to have to change the way we operate and he'll be no different, but he, as you've alluded, he will, he will do a good job at adapting. As a guy that's been around baseball his entire life, will it be odd for you to watch the new reality knowing there are no fans and guys are going to have to go about things differently? There's no doubt uh, for everyone involved, this is this is going to be a, a very different experience opening day at Yankee Stadium with with no fans. But we hope it's going to be short lived, that phenomenon. And we hope to get some fans back uh, sooner rather than later. Are you curious to see how your new pitching coach hire, Matt Blake, fares in this situation? It was going to be his first year in uniform at the major league level as a pitching coach. And now he has another wrinkle that he has to deal with. Yeah, look, he's 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 going to adapt as well. He's a very uh, adaptive guy. Um, we've made a lot of changes. I'm going to be curious to see how Eric Cressy, who we brought on, and Donovan and Brett McCabe, our new strength and conditioning coach, how it goes with with injuries, and um, how these guys, you know, get in shape. And so we we made a lot of changes. Blake's just one of them. Um, I'm going to be curious to see if we we made the right decisions everywhere. Hopefully, we did. But while you haven't seen them in game action, but have you noticed? any difference just from the limited time that they were able to work with the players? Well, I, I can only tell you talking to some of the players, they, they're very happy with all the changes we made and in, uh, in personnel, also in equipment in the weight room. 
Um, we changed a lot of things. And um, so the, the players seem excited and, and they like, like the changes we make. And that's a good start. So what happens for you from now until July 23rd? Just making sure, uh, keeping my fingers crossed that, that we stay healthy. That's the most important thing. And that these guys uh, continue to get more and more in shape. And it's going to be a short spring training compared to usual, uh, which has its concerns of its own. But just going to be here uh, watching over everything and enjoying everything I see. Appreciating it more than I probably ever, ever had. Hal, thank you so much, as always, for the time. And I look forward to seeing you at the ballpark soon. Likewise, Meredith. Thanks.